friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel, Sunset Bow Tarot. So today I wanted to do a quick walkthrough of a brand new deck. This is one of the ones that I have been most excited to add to my collection. Um, this is the new edition of the Fantastic Menagerie Tarot from Baba Studio. And ever since I heard that they were going to be republishing this one, I've just been so, so excited about it. I pre-ordered it immediately. Um, this is a deck that I've had on my sort of, uh, you know, long shot wish list, unicorn decks list for a long time um, as a, one of those decks that I would love to own one day, but didn't have much hope of ever owning. And so I was thrilled to find out that they were going to be republishing it um, in a new edition, which is a brand new sort of um, slightly different. I think all of the imagery is the same as the old edition, but they've d updated it with all of the cold foil stamping that um, they've been doing on a lot of their recent decks. And I'm just so thrilled to finally have a copy of this deck. So anyway, this is again, the Fantastic Menagerie Tarot. This is uh, by Baba Studio. They've just recently um, released this in both a regular size edition and also a larger special edition that came in a wood box. I did not get the big special edition. I just got the regular edition. So obviously you can see the deck, you know, comes in a beautiful box with the seal of authenticity and everything. Um, um, I also did get a bag to go with the deck because they did have matching bags and they had these ones that um, are velvet and it has an image of the moon card on it, which I loved. They had um, some other bags with some different images from the deck, but the moon is my favorite card and I particularly love the image from this moon card. So I decided to get this one. Um, and then I also got a copy of the guidebook. Mine got a little bit munged up in the mail, but that's no big deal. It came all the way from Ireland, so I'm not too concerned. Um, and I'll take a look at the guidebook uh, later on. But just as an introduction, this deck is based on the artwork of J.J. Granville, who was an artist who was active um, in the 19th century uh, and was known for these like kind of engraving images that are sort of fantastical and strange and, um, you know, interesting use of anthropomorphized animals. Um, and uh, so I, I really enjoy this style of artwork. Um, it has that quirky factor that I always love in a deck. Um, and it's just, it seems very strange and witty and I've been very excited to get a copy of this one. So let's go ahead first and take a look at the deck and we'll take a closer look at the guidebook later on. So again, it comes in a beautiful um, box, the normal clamshell style uh, Baba Studio box with some lovely gilding on the box. It's very pretty. So it does come with um, a little white book in the box. The, their larger guidebooks are sold separately. I always buy them because their large guidebooks are very good, but they do also have um, a little white book that comes with the deck that it, generally speaking, their little white books are pretty good also. Um, but uh, you know, just in terms of, um, of, you know, the actual card meanings that they give. But if you want a lot more insight into the artwork, the larger books are always really excellent from Baba Studio. So here are the cards. It's a normal size of a Baba Studio deck. They tend to be a little bit larger and wider um, than a standard tarot, but not significantly so. This is a um, standard tarot size Pam's Vintage uh, card from Game Crafter. Um, and so it does come with this uh, title card and hopefully you can kind of get a sense, even the title card has this foil cold stamping on it and you can kind of get a sense of the, the shimmer that that has. It's incredibly detailed and finely done, as you can see, um, but it is all foil and it does have that shimmer when you look at the cards. And all of their the cards are like this um, with that large amount of um, foil stamping on there. So it also did come with an extra little art card that has some additional artwork by JJ Granville. This one is not foil stamped, but um, just to sort of protect the back of the deck and it has some foil on the back. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit and take a closer look at the artwork of this deck. I've been so excited about this one. So I should first note the card backs. It's a really pretty design on the card backs. Um, and uh, it is also, you know, gold foiled on the back. So they do have that lovely shimmer that you can see. Um, like most Baba Studios decks, 
it is not thick cardstock, but it is also very durable cardstock. So they use a very, very high quality um, plain card style cardstock. Um, it's a smooth finish, um, but their decks always shuffle absolutely beautifully. They're, it's very bendable, but it has a strong core, so it snaps back um, really well uh, when you when you you know bend it. Uh, it's very flexible, um, but also lies very flat. They tend to lie very flat, you know, when you have them laid out, which is really nice. Um, I, I love Baba Studio cardstock. It's um, it, I I don't mind the thinness at all. I find this much easier to work with than a lot of the sort of thicker stock that you see being used on indie decks nowadays. Um, this, this I really find lovely. So again, you know, this deck is all full of anthropomorphized animals, um, in various witty situations. I mean, it is all pre-created art. So there's, you know, definitely a, a use of pre-created art that was not originally intended for tarot. But from what I've seen of this deck before, I found that the artwork really matches well, uh, that they've chosen with the meanings of the cards. And in a lot of cases has a very sort of witty or subversive take on the actual card meaning. So here we have the fool and the magician, <laughs> which is a monkey using misdirection. Uh, here we have the beautiful high priestess. I love the cat and the owl in the background. And here's the empress. And again, hopefully as I move the cards, you can get a sense of the gold foil stamping. You can see that the colors are very bright, um, but a lot of it is foiling. And so, you, you know, it, it definitely um, shimmers as you move the card. So it's, it's really lovely. And the emperor, I love this lion emperor. That's pretty perfect. Um, here we have the hierophant, <laughs> which is like a stag beetle. <laughs> with supplicant beetles. <laughs> and here's the lovers. Um, this weird ox and uh, goat lovers with a deer trying to catch her eye in the background there. Um, and here we have the chariot. This is so cute. Little insects uh, being pulled in a snail shell. Here's strength. This cracks me up. We've got an ant here or some kind of some kind of insect, it looks like it has wings, um, smacking a lion with a big club. So <laughs> that's quite amusing. Um, and here we have the hermit. So it's like a little glow worm with his little lantern. And that's so pretty, I love that. Here's the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, I love this. So we've got um, an actual fortune teller here, um, owl fortune teller reading cards um, for this weird uh, donkey lady. <laughs> And there's also a, an actual wheel down here, this little bird playing with a wheel. So that's kind of a fun, a fun take on the Wheel of Fortune. Here's Justice. Obviously, there's, I'm guessing, some kind of political commentary happening here because, you know, we have a, the unicorn and the lion. So obviously, you know, it is potentially some kind of commentary on British politics, but I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to look at the guidebook for that. Here's the Hanged Man. And here's death. Ooh, we've got a stalking like heron or egret, a heron probably, um, going after some frogs with a little, another little kind of stag beetle type creature. Oh, and the beetle has the scythe. That's a scythe right there. <laughs> That's hysterical. Here's temperance, kitty cat temperance. Here's the devil. And the tower. This is great. We've got um, wolves uh, who appear to be spiriting the sheep away from the ruined tower. Um, here's the star. A beautiful stork head lady. <laughs> And the moon. These birds have some cleavage, man. Like, <laughs> and here's the sun. I like how he has like a halo of dancing um, 
dragonflies. And Judgment is a phoenix, which is pretty perfect. And finally, the world is this dancing grasshopper. All right, so now we get into the suit. So here is the Ace of Wands, which is this deer holding a little baby bird and the Two of Wands. This is kind of fun because it does look like he's plotting something, but then we've got the horns kind of as the Two Wands. And here's the Three of Wands. So we've got some animals uh, with telescopes surveying things off in the distance. The Four of Wands. There is a cow playing jump rope. <laughs> But there's some kind of party happening. They're having a good time. The Five of Wands. This cracks me up because this so perfectly captures um, how I see the Five of Wands. It's like they're literally like having a cockfight here. Like two puffed up uh, roosters f fighting with each other in a way that does not look particularly serious. Um, that's a, a great Five of Wands. Here's the Six of Wands. Um, we've got some bugs cheering another bug. And the Seven of Wands. This warthog is clearly being attacked. Here we have the Eight of Wands. And this is interesting. This looks like some kind of like racehorse party, maybe? Hmm. Interesting. And then here's the Nine of Wands. So again, it looks like we have a a rat with a rifle with rifles and bayonets behind him he's clearly ready to go back off into battle the ten of wands this horse pulling a big heavy load while this cow chills um, and enjoys his leisure time and then getting into the courts here we have the page of wands which looks like some kind of rabbit and the knight of wands this I find actually quite funny. Um, this unicorn with a ginormous horn as the Knight of Wands. Here we have the Queen of Wands, who is a cat. And we still have a black cat and the Queen of Wands, but I love that. And then the King of Wands is this very sort of smug looking lion who seems like he's had a lot of success in life. Um, and this poor lizard is hoping for some help. All right, so getting into the cups, um, it looks like the cups are all sort of like child or baby themed. So we have this little bird coming out of a shell and the ace. Here we have the two. So a couple of cats having a tryst on a rooftop, being serenaded. The three of cups, some animals having a fun drink together. Here's the four. And the five, looks like we've got some spilled milk here, potentially. And the six of cups. Here's the seven. This one obviously has been assembled from various artworks. And here's the eight of cups. Looks like an owl leaving home. The Nine of Cups is this happy elephant smoking a cigar with lots of bottles of wine around him. And then finally, the Ten of Cups is this happy family of bugs. <laughs> so um, so the Page of Cups, we've got a, some bird here creating some kind of, um, looks like he's like an apothecary or something, creating some kind of... Uh, mixture. We've got the Knight of Cups, which is this <laughs> rabbit with hooves. Like, what is this? Is this a jackalope? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, and here we have the Queen of Cups. She's very lovely and she looks very romantic. And the King of Cups is a penguin. I love that. This is a great King of Cups. Love him. All right. So here we have the Ace of Swords. Again, it's a baby themed in the aces, it looks like. Um, here we have the two of swords. <laughs> and 
or the three. Oh no, this poor guy is discovered. <laughs> He's another two birds. Apparently his uh, lover is unfaithful. Um, here we have the four of swords, which looks like a couple of uh, lizards smoking opium. <laughs> um, five of swords. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. We've got a bird giving, oh, it looks like the bird is trying to get this moth closer to the flame, maybe. Like this looks like a moth and the bird is sort of trying to lure her in, potentially. Um, here we have the six of swords. So it's a bird with lots of other birds heading off. And the seven of swords, this one cracks me up because it's literally foxes saving, quote, saving the hens from the hen house. So that is pretty amusing as a seven of swords. Here we have the eight of swords. It's a giraffe, but she looks like she's a bit um, hemmed in by circumstances. And the nine of swords, uh oh, the nine of swords, the little baby bird has fallen out of the nest. And now here comes the hawk to finish it off. And here is the Ten of Swords, who is this very, very creepy looking crocodile who something bad is going on here. So we have the Page of Swords. I just, I find all these animals so amusing. The Knight of Swords is a mosquito, which is perfect, a perfect Knight of Swords. <laughs> um, here's the Queen. She's quite lovely. And the king is this eagle. There's, I think there's, there seems to be a lot of like birds and flying animals represented in the, in the swords, which is, which is good. All right. So again, here we have a baby, ace of coins. Looks like we have a frog feeding a baby lamb. <laughs> Here's the two of coins. And the three. Looks like these guys are cooperating on something. And the four, this, uh, this rat is not letting anyone else have any of his cheese. Here's the five. And again, these foxes look like they are not going to let this chicken. Oh, they're eating the chicken's eggs, it looks like. And she is very upset. So that is a sad scene. Here's the six. Here we have the seven. It looks like this cat is annoyed because potentially this uh, dog can't wait for the meal to be finished. And here is the eight of coins, a whole animal band making music together, practicing together. The nine. <laughs> the look, the look on her face. She is just happily warbling away, singing her music there all by herself. And here we have the Ten of Coins. This is interesting. There's some kind of, I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on in this one, so I'm going to have to look that up in the guidebook. Um, but here we have the Page of Coins. Working hard. The Knight of Coins. Big old turkey. Here's the Queen of Coins. Taking care of her little family. And the King of Coins, who is quite uh, resplendent in his, uh, his riches. So love it. So I, I find this deck so amusing. Um, I think it's pretty fantastic, actually. I'm so excited to use this. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a shuffle um, just so that folks can see how it shuffles. Um, but this Baba Studio cardstock is like such a beautiful shuffle. It just is lovely to work with. It's so, I mean, it's just, it's so flexible. So it shuffles and bridges really beautifully. Um, and I, I love working with their cards. Um, they're, they're very durable, but again, very, very flexible and, and easy to shuffle for a ripple shuffler like me. Um, I just, I thoroughly enjoy the decks that they create. Um, I think I have most of the Baba Studios decks. There are a couple of theirs that I don't have. I don't have the Alice deck. I don't have the Fairy Tale Tarot. Um, 
but I do have, I have this one, the Mythical Creatures, the Victorian Romantic, the Tarot of Prague, and the Bohemian Gothic. And um, I absolutely love their decks. So I think they're just really wonderfully put together. And like, like I said, they do have um, really fantastic guidebooks. So let's go ahead and take a look at the guidebook next. I am actually going to just draw a card. And let's see, we got the King of Wands here. So um, let's take a look at the guidebook and then we'll take a look specifically at the entry for the King of Wands. So here is the guidebook. Let me just zoom out again a little bit. Um, and uh, you can see it's, it, you know, it's a really nice guidebook. It's around 250 pages. Um, and there's a lot of information up front um, specifically about, um, you know, how they, how they did the images. Um, and, uh, you know, how, how they put things together, um, as well as some background on tarot, um, how they, you know, decided to create based on the art of JJ Granville and some information on him as an artist, quite a bit of information on him as an artist, by, uh, by the way, which is, which is great. How to use the tarot, um, so a, a number of spreads, which is wonderful. Um, some sample readings, numerology, which, yeah, I mean, as you can see, they've, you know, they really do a wonderful job of their guidebooks. It really has a lot of information. I never buy a Baba Studios deck without buying the guidebook that goes with it because they honestly create really wonderful guidebooks. Um, so here we have, you know, information about, uh, the majors, and then we go into the specific card meaning. So for the majors, we've got quite a bit of information. It up front has, you know, the, the meanings, the sort of general meanings of up, upright, reversed, um, you know, what the fool means. But then they go specifically into, um, you know, how they created that particular piece of artwork, what the different symbols in it represent, what artwork it's from. Um, and, you know, they really cover uh, in a lot of detail um, a lot of information here. So, it, so it's, it's really wonderful. It looks like they have a story for every single one of the images, which is so cool. So that's the majors. And let's go ahead and take a look at the minors. So here we go into the minors and we'll start with the wands. It, it looks like there's some general themes about, about the minors. Um, so, but there is quite a bit of information. There's a little bit less for each uh, minor than there is for the majors, but there still is a full like two pages um, with the color illustration of the card um, and some, you know, extra, extra information. So that's really cool. Let's take a look at what it says about the King of Wands. The flamboyant performer who gets things done. We have upright and reverse meanings. Um, and then this description, he's on top of the world and he knows it. He has charisma, power, and more than his share of sex appeal. Um, like Leon Rastignac, the newspaper proprietor in our portrait, he makes things move. And wherever he appears, lives are changed around him instincts, maybe president, media mogul, occupy any position in which he can lead others to fulfill his own vision, self-confidence and drive, egotism and occasional vanity. Um, and then it, it talks again about the image here. He's re re theatrical, showy and dramatic. We chose a resplendent lion puffing on a cigar and brandishing a cane. And then there's a pillar with a playbill. Perhaps this is his stage name. The lizard is hoping for a little attention, but is sadly being ignored. And then it says the portrait of the King of Wands. So it's talking specifically about, um, about, about a person, I think. I'm not going to read all of this, but it's talking about a specific person who I think is supposed to be represented by this particular card. So that's awesome. Very awesome. So that is the Fantastic Menagerie Tarot. 
Um, lots of wonderful stuff going on in this deck. I'm so excited to use that use it. It's always a good sign, I feel like, when I'm actually laughing at the images that I'm seeing during the walkthrough. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm really thrilled to finally have a copy of this one. Like I said, it's been one of my unicorn decks for a long time. And so when Baba Studio announced that they were reprinting it, I could not have been more thrilled. So can't wait to go ahead and use it. And thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Um, if you're so inclined, please feel free to um, like this video and subscribe to my channel to see uh, more tarot content that I am going to be putting out in the near future. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.